do a bit of a brief background on who you are and I guess why you wanted to do this. All right. So uh, I I started my Linux journey in at the end of 2023. So I'm actually pretty new to Linux overall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Sure. Yes. Yeah, going from uh, not using it to doing the spin thing. Making a spin. Yeah. 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 Uh, I recall in your video about the spin, you talked about like how I talked about it was my first time doing a mailing list and all that. Uh, that was just like a couple months into using Linux overall. So okay. I just kind of jumped in. <laughs> but uh, I was in college at the time and uh, I, I'd i used Linux sometimes for like classes, but never really daily drove it or put it on bare metal. So I was kind of, it was kind of just a uh, impulsive decision. I was like, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to take my entire uh, laptop and switch it over to Linux. I wasn't even going to dual boot. I just wanted to switch to Linux entirely. <laughs> uh, I uh, I was actually kind of convinced to do that by some uh, contributors to the Godot engine, because back then I, I was doing contributions to their project. And mm -hmm. uh, I saw a bunch of people talk about Linux. I was like, uh, hey, uh, what distro would you guys recommend? What uh, What, like? you know, spin or what desktop environment. And uh, most of them there were like, uh, definitely choose Fedora. Um, uh, when I told them the laptop I had, I had like a kind of a newer gaming laptop at the mm -hmm. time. And they're like, yeah, for the newest uh, packages and everything, you want to go Fedora. Um, and they said, you know, Gnome or KDE either is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started out on uh, Gnome, actually. <laughs> OK. For the longest time, I, I was on GNOME. And uh, I think I've just kind of switched around desktop environments ever since. <laughs> I don't really stick on one for a whole long time. But uh, later on, I kind of got interested in the Rust programming language. And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that became my language for basically everything I developed. And then I found out later that uh, they were that uh somebody was developing a rust-based desktop environment so i was like all right uh i'm gonna jump in on that uh and that well, you was would have back just when been getting yeah you would have like, just been getting into linux probably around about when they first started talking about it I, I think yeah uh i think it was in development for a long time but like no nobody really talked about it until like the beginning of uh 2024 mm. i'd say um so around that time, I installed it on my machine, and everything kind of sucked with it. Going to be honest, back then it was <laughs> it was very bare bones, and I instantly found a lot of bugs. Uh, I wasn't able to connect to my uh, school's network. Um, that was like one of my first bug reports. I was I was like, yeah, I can't connect to enterprise networks for whatever reason. Um, the panels were weird. I uh, I really hated the fact that. Uh, whenever you set the panel to really small, the app icons were just really minuscule and the dots were like almost the same size. Uh, so eventually those issues kind of irked me enough to where I started contributing. <laughs> and uh, so one of the first things I tried to tackle was the uh, enterprise Wi-Fi thing. And <laughs> that was the only thing I tackled that I never really uh, finished. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, the app tray problem though uh, I've kind of focused on the app, app tray for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and so I also uh, implemented the uh, touchpad gestures for like switching workspaces. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of my favorite contributions because that uh, made me have to learn Rust in a way I'd never learned before, mm -hmm. uh, going into the compositor and everything. Um, and uh, I think. Power Profiles daemon support. That was like the last thing I contributed that's actually been merged like mm -hmm. significantly. Uh, I have some like outgoing PRs that I haven't really had time to revisit for mm -hmm. a while. But yeah, so I started contributing there. And since I was on Fedora and they didn't have like any Cosmic support at all, I was using an unofficial uh, like uh, silver blue based image mm -hmm. by Draculix. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that was the, uh, yeah, that was the first image I used. And I was already kind of a fan of the image-based operating system. So I just rebased to it. And I was like, wow, this is easy. <laughs> uh, but I found out that it was out of date uh, whenever I tried switching over to it uh, it wouldn't boot at first. So I was like, OK, time to, uh, time to try and update this. It was only a couple months old, but they've been working on Cosmic nonstop. Uh, 
But yeah, uh, I think you actually found the forum post where I talked about that for the first time. Uh, Somebody was like, "Yeah, uh, I probably did, I probably mentioned it a couple of times. I don't have the link at hand right now, but um, usually, usually when I, I talk I talk about something like this, I'll like try to dig back as far as I can get. If someone mentions a thing, I'm like, okay, where can I find that link? And usually yeah, that gets yeah. me back as as early as I need to be. Um, or, right. you know, if, if it's a forum, sometimes you can see post history, things like that, and you can go back through earlier things people have said. Um, so at the time, right now, you are the maintainer of the um, Fedora Copper Cosmic Package. Was there any yes. package for Cosmic at the time, or was it just that? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was not. Uh and honestly, making the uh, the packages was maybe one of the most frustrating experiences in Linux I've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was very rewarding once I had that because uh, when we had the original uh, like silver blue images, we were just compiling Cosmic from source every mm -hmm. time we would do the uh, image build. And so I had it running daily on a GitHub action, but it was taking like uh, four hours or so just to build everything in GitHub. <laughs> and uh, so about the time that I proposed making the SIG, uh, mm -hmm. which was another thing I did around that time, uh, because people were showing interest, and I was like, I kind of want to be the change that I want to see in the world and actually get involved with that. So uh, I made the proposal, uh, got approval, uh, made my matrix room, and a couple people joined, including Neil at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. But he was just kind of generally interested in bringing up new spins. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was working on the Fedora Miracle spin like yep. a little bit yep. later on as well. Uh, and he gave uh, a lot of great advice for bringing up a spin. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's been kind of my consultant throughout the whole thing. Um, but the first step, of course, was to build packages. Um, so yeah, that was, and I was still in, I was still in school at that time. So mm -hmm. whenever I was uh, not working on school stuff i was just working on uh, rpm packages it took about oh sorry go on i uh, know no go on go on You're about to say something. okay ah. uh so sorry i if i'm if i'm rambling just stop no me. no okay. go it's uh, fine it's fine I, I was just gonna ask you um about the process of making packages but you might you might have gotten into that anyway yeah uh so uh it depends on your distribution but rpm well, packages, specifically uh, for fedora yeah yeah uh so uh my first set of packages did not conform to the fedora guidelines at all uh mm. it was very far from it but uh in a basic sense all you need to set up is uh some metadata like a uh, version uh source url for uh repository and uh some build instructions mm -hmm. and installation instructions and then one thing that rpm has different from some other package managers is you have to actually specify uh which files are owned by the package so you have to go in and find every artifact from your build where it's installed and list that in like a file section. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something that's kind of unique to that that the Debian packages didn't have. So mm -hmm. oftentimes I was referencing the uh, the Debian packages that Pop OS was trying to put out, uh, but that was one of the things I couldn't just mm -hmm. bring over. Uh, but overall, it was it was it was fine. It wasn't too hard. The hard part was testing them after the fact. Right. So, I've talked a bit about the Fedora Copper before, and it's kind of... It's not exactly the same. It's kind of like Fedora's AUR, but it's not exactly the same, because my understanding is it's also build infrastructure as well as a way to access these packages. Yes, it is. Uh, it provides building, uh, hosting, and uh, even in my, like... Uh, it even facilitated Fedora review. Like I was able to just take the uh, the artifacts from there and put them into my uh, review request. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so it was nice to have that off my computer and on a centralized resource. Uh, I don't think I would have uh, gotten this far if I had run it on my my own computer. Yeah, you uh, did, and especially you were saying oh, sorry, four on. hours on GitHub. So you know, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah bu building that would be <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, a little, a little rough. It would, it would be a chore. And uh, also, it was nice to have that uh, set up to where I can just click rebuild all packages. And for a while, I just did that every day. Uh, nowadays, I have a script that actually uh, checks like 
whether the version has changed between right. the upstream. So I'm not building as many packages at once. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's more of a recent thing. Uh, for like almost a year, I was just going in every day and clicking rebuild all packages manually. <laughs> uh, that is something that uh, I've really enjoyed doing is building all this automation around the entire process. Mm -hmm. um, I have the packages automated. Uh, whenever there's a update in the Fedora repos, uh, most of the time, most of it is off automated. I just uh, build in a separate copper for tag packages, and then mm -hmm. reference the latest build, download it, uh, and then push it to the official Fedora repos and have it build there. Mm -hmm. And that's all like uh, a one-page Rust program. <laughs> so it's nice. It's a uh, it's fun to have it all automated, but it means that over time I can kind of forget what I had automated in the first place. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you asked me to go back and reference how I did everything, uh, I'd have to look through the code and be like, oh, yeah, that's that's what I did there. That's what I did there. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, 